So now let's quickly look at um, your barriers to entry. So what do we mean by barriers to entry or what do we mean by artificial barriers to entry? Okay, when we talk about artificial barriers to entry, okay, we are talking about man-made barriers to entry. So in this case, an example of man-made barriers to entry would be government licenses. So in this case, there are certain firms that require government licenses to operate. All right. For example, telecommunications, banks, all right, all these that require special banking license, okay, special telco license to operate. And without this license, okay, you are not supposed to open this firm. Okay, and depending on the requirement um by the government, the government can issue one license, okay, effectively creating a monopoly. Or it can create a few licenses, okay, effectively creating oligopolies. Okay, so this um can be used interchangeably. Please take note. The second one, it is not so much of a government decision, but it's a more of a business decision. Alright, or what we know as a franchise or a trademark. Okay, it simply tells you this this gives you an exclusive right to sell a specific product or service. And in this case, um Franchise, um, a very good example of franchise owner would be or, fran or franchise um, business would be McDonald's. All right. So in this case, um, what happens is um, the McDonald's headquarters in the United States can actually sell the master franchisee, um, master franchisor to the to let's say Singapore. All right, to one person in Singapore. Okay. So what this one person in Singapore. Okay, it's actually quite interesting. So US, okay, this is the this is the main franchise owner. Okay, he can sell the franchise to Singapore for McDonald's. He can sell it to one person. Okay, and in this and this one person will be the master franchisor of Singapore. Okay, and this person can actually choose to operate the McDonald's by itself. Okay, so in this case, uh, depending on how big um, Singapore is, he can choose to operate all the McDonald's outlet by himself, or he can choose to um, sell the franchise, um, or or subs or 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 simply sell the franchise um, ownership to uh, sub franchisors, sub franchise, sub franchise owners. Okay, meaning to say, um, they can actually break down Singapore into various districts like Orchard, Aukang, Serangoon, all right, and they can actually sell these uh, rights to operate McDonald's, okay, to specific individual owners, and they actually earn a royalty here. Okay, and in and in order for um for this Singapore person to own the master franchisor of Singapore, they have to pay a fee to United States as well. Okay, and this fee is going to be very expensive. So you can actually see that um, without the um, without the franchise uh, franchise distribution by this master franchisor, okay, or the US um, a, a approving of a master franchisor in Singapore, all right, you are not supposed to use the McDonald's brand, McDonald's franchise, or McDonald's anything that's related to McDonald's, all right. If not, you will get sued, all right, and uh, you will lose the case because it is actually. Um, it's actually um the trademark is actually uh filed properly already. All right. The last part is actually more pertaining to healthcare, more pertaining to sciences. All right. This is what we known as patents and rights. So in this case, um, one firm, especially medical firm, okay, they can actually purchase a patent for a specific drug. Okay, let's say this firm has actually found a, a, a cure for HIV, okay, and they actually patent this drug. So what happens is, for patents, the purpose of patent is to protect the existing producer, okay, for undertaking the risk for research and development for a specific drug, okay, for up to 10 years. Why is there a need to protect? Many body has asked me. All right. Um, well, because um, if you don't protect um, these producers for for um, for producing such a drug, okay, what happens is other firms can simply come in and 
have a free riding effect, meaning to say they will copy or reverse engineer the drug. Okay, and remember, for this drug to materialize, it involves a lot of research and developmental costs. Okay, and in this case, um, without a patent, this actually destroys the incentive for R&D. So the patent is arguably there to um, protect the uh, in uh, they protect the interests of firms who invested in R and D, okay, and they want to give them five to ten years time to recoup, okay, what they have actually invested in this technology to produce this specific drug, okay, and we after ten years, for example, okay, um, this uh patent ship of the drug will cease to exist, okay, and um other firms can actually start manufacturing this this drug um directly. All right, okay, but they will be um they will be manufacturing under another name, okay. But if it is patented, you can't even produce the same kind of drug, okay, even in un uh, even with another name, all right. So these are all man-made barriers to entry that I need you to have a good understanding, okay, because um when we talk about market structure, all right, it is all about barriers to entry, barriers to entry. All right, and it is all these barriers to entry that actually give the monopoly a high market power. Okay, and later on we'll be looking at um, natural barriers to entry. All right, so um, later on I'll cover about that.